Hello everyone, Rachel here from the NOIC Godcast, where we offer wacky wisdom weekly from God's Word. This month we're taking a look at freedom. Today I want to take a closer look at just how the Israelites celebrated their freedom. I hope everyone had a fun celebration this week. Mm. It's always nice to have a day to just have some fun and relax, mm-hmm. but we're, we're celebrating our country's freedom. Yeah. Um, yes, fireworks and cookouts mm-hmm. and some mm-hmm. sort of water activity are usually involved. But I'm, Rain count. Ra- I mean, most of the time, yes. Um, mm. But I'm thankful that we live in a free country. So the Israelites celebrated a little bit differently than than that um, as they left their life of bondage. Celebrated. Yes, celebrated a little, little differently, no fireworks. There was water in that. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but not so much games. <laughs> fireworks. Yeah, they had their pillow, pillow of fire. Pillow of fire. Well, okay, day, I guess. That's that's true. True. It was actually in this fireworks. dark sky yeah. night like yeah. that. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's a lot more Americana going on than I thought. Yeah. Well, so they were <laughs> just like, now it not sense well. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like, what is that? <laughs> So they were finally leaving their enslavement after many, many years. Mm-hmm. And instantly, Pharaoh regretted letting them go, and he starts chasing them. Mm-hmm. And so the Israelites start complaining. Mm-hmm. I'm sure it was kind of a less than ideal situation with Pharaoh's 600 chosen chariots and all the chariots of Egypt coming after them and yeah. all. And just, you know, it's not like, you know, like you and your family. Like, you know, yeah. you've got yeah. like all of the Israelites trying to like <laughs> run away. Can you imagine and... having a little five-year-old like, don't look back, don't look back, yeah. don't look back. <laughs> Terrifying. Or they're yelling like the British are coming. <laughs> I don't think that's what they yelled. <laughs> Pharaoh's coming. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> but Moses trusted God. He said to them in Exodus 14, 13 and 14, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will shew to you today. I think this was to say today, not do <laughs> <Do-day>. day. day. <laughs> for the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again mm-hmm. no more forever. The Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. Right after this, God tells Moses to raise his rod, raise his rod to divide mm-hmm. the Red Sea. Their water. That's how they got their water. There. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they all walked on dry ground safely. They began to sing and to celebrate, and once again, they're, they're saved. And then just three short days later, they didn't have any water, so they, they started complaining again. Mm-hmm. But God provided water for them. And then a little while longer, they were complaining about not having any food, and God provided for them yet again. We are just like the Israelites. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Some reason, this, there's this thought that once you're saved, like we get out of this bondage, that everything is going to be smooth sailing oh, yeah. and, and just easy lives. But our lives are much like the Israelites in the wilderness. Mm-hmm. God saves us and we're so excited. And then instantly we're smacked with life's re- reality or big trials come. And though we may not have a whole nation chasing after us, the things of life cause us to be scared and we doubt God. Yeah. But he comes through for us. Then the next storm hits. The Israelites did face a lot. I mean, I'm not saying that it had to be easy to go through. No. You know, I imagine having mm-hmm. my kids and not having food and not yeah. having water. And like mm-hmm. that had to be hard and it had to be scary. But God never once left them. He always provided just what they needed. Mm-hmm. He does the same for us. We grumble and we complain, but he still comes through for us. If we put our trust in him, there is a freedom of knowing he is our shepherd mm-hmm. and we shall not want. Mm. A freedom to let go of worry because we have our hope in the one who created it all and knows the beginning to the end. Freedom from trying to be good enough because our righteousness comes from him and he is perfect. Mm -hmm. In him, we have all that we need. I think that one of the um, things that, so like like in America, the American Revolution, like it was very obvious who we were free from. Mm Mm-hmm. Like Cuba wasn't a problem <laughs> <laughs> at the time, <laughs> give it a few hundred years. But like, you know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah, that yeah. wasn't, it was obvious. It was the British versus the mm-hmm. colonies, the yep. Americans, right? So it was obvious. I think when it comes to the Christian life, we really sometimes forget who our bondage is to. Mm-hmm. And that's why I love, like y'all know, I love the children of Israel, the Egypt story. Like I spent several years there um, and Rachel stole it from me. Because uh, I went first. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I love that scene because it's so evident, so clear that who the bondage was two and like you get this story in exodus in the beginning there before the red sea incident where it's so obvious how poorly they're being treated Mm -hmm. like in bondage they're literally slaves they're literally captives they're literally held under an evil power but then this evil power is making their circumstances their situation their life worse and worse and worse 
And so it's like their slavery is becoming worse and there's no freedom in sight. So they finally leave and they do have freedom. Mm -hmm. But what you find and what Rachel's kind of alluding to is that they say, we want to go back to our bondage. We want to go back to the leeks and onions because we had it so good then. They forget what bondage was like and how bad they actually had it. And so they're ready to give up their freedom Mm -hmm. in order to please their flesh in this instance or to get what they wanted. And like, we're so, we're so the same way. Like every single time we give into sin, it's the same thing. God has set us free from bondage. We are now free, free indeed, Jesus says. And yet every time we give into sin, we go and we lay down in the shackles and chain ourselves back up. It's the comfortable thing. Yeah. Like, even though it's not comfortable, that's just what we've known. And so that's what you tend towards because you're like, I know the outcome of this thing, but I don't know what the outcome of this thing is. Right. It's an interesting point because, you know, we're all born into sin (laughs) and sin is our default mood. You know what I'm saying? So just like anything else, when it's not working the way you think it should, you have to make a decision. Because if yeah. a computer, you're like, do I want to erase all this good stuff that I've accumulated yeah. or do I want to go back to default mode? Yeah. Well, I need my computer, you know, yeah. so forget all this good stuff. I need to go back to default mode. You know what I mean? So because we can't, you know, that's a very good point you brought up. Like we can't see the ending mm-hmm. of the goodness Okay, because God's goodness is never ending. That's like the point. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But we can see like the box of bondage that we were in. You know what I mean? And because we can touch the walls, we can see the walls, we can feel the walls. Mm -hmm. That's very comforting as opposed to just standing out, staring out into a vast unknown. You know what I mean? Like I could go that way and I don't know what's that way. I think really the different the the question of freedom so this month and in the story is who do you want to be your master? Yeah. Like that's really what it comes down to. Like you can go back to what you knew in bondage or you can come to surrender and submit to the unknown in the faith component of who right. God is. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. you either have the good master yeah. or you have the wicked master, but ultimately you will be submit one. to someone. Mm-hmm. And like that's the freedom that Christ offers. I, I think you kind of talked about this last week a little bit, but like Christ offers freedom in a boundary. Like yep. I think freedom fencing. Yeah, freedom uh, fencing. Fancy freedom fencing. <laughs> uh, but that's what Christ offers. Like it's not a, fr- a willy nilly life of yeah. freedom. It's a life within bounds. Mm-hmm. And because of those bounds, you're able to be free. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yep. And they and that's what. Protected. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. I think it's interesting that you all have kids and like you give your kids like freedom yeah. in, in some areas. But all the freedom that you would give them until they move out of your house is going to come within the boundaries right. mm-hmm. of what you right. allow to do. Yep. You, you know what I mean? Yep. So you guys are awesome parents, I believe. Thank you. Okay. So I see how, like, the boundaries fit, mm-hmm. you know what I mean, up until yeah. a certain point. You know what I mean? And then, un- unfortunately, unfortunately, your boundaries will fall mm-hmm. apart, and then they are supposed to pick up. Right. You know, the, the, mm-hmm. the, the boundaries that you yeah. taught them and continue yep. their life and so forth and so on. So, like, a lot of people think of freedom is not having any boundaries to mm-hmm. do, you know, willy nilly whatever you want to do. You know what I mean? But to me, that sounds like a lot like hell because right. mm-hmm. there is yeah. no boundaries. Absolutely. Like, people are free to do whatever they yep. want to do. And, like, in one of my life, wise classes, this just takes it on my head. I'm like, it would be like someone gnawing on your ankle mm-hmm. because they can, yeah. and you gnawing on someone else's ankle because you can. Yeah. Like, there is nothing to say. Don't gnaw on people's ankles. Yep. You know what I mean? Like, don't sit on their head. Well, don't. And, and kind of to that point, I don't want to pull this thread too far but to that point like the bible describes hell as a vast darkness Mm -hmm. and and basically a vast limitless openness Mm -hmm. right like there are no bounds yes and yet heaven has gates gates and walls Mm -hmm. yeah and so again and again we're not going politics here with this (laughs) but what i want to get across is it is the bounds that allows for goodness yeah you take away the bounds and you can't have goodness like freedom is within bounds in order to make something of any benefit you know what i'm saying and so when you take all of that away it's so undefined and so open and chaotic Mm -hmm. that you are you're actually bound Mm -hmm. and there is no freedom Mm -hmm. you're you're bound by the freedom of the your 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 freedom is bound by the person next to you you know what i mean like what they will do yeah like like how how far are they gonna let you 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 know what i mean so Mm -hmm. it's kind of weird to think about it but The, There's a reason it's called the upside down kingdom. Yeah, like it really is. We have our minds very trained, but it really is so counterintuitive most times. Mm-hmm. 
Good podcast, Rachel. Good job. Yeah, always. Yeah, yeah. Such an excellent job. Yes, yes. I think we've all put in more words than you. But that's, that's okay. Per usual. Do the word count. Yeah. The so today's considerable quote is by Major Ian Thomas. Grace is not the freedom to sin, but the freedom not to sin. Grace is God's heart extending itself toward us as he initiates in us the ability to overcome our weaknesses, failures, and inadequacies. Uh, today's featured content is Firm Foundation by Cody Carnes. Mm. And you act like you were going to say something. Do you no, want to do my trivia no, for me? I'm just listening. Last week's the trivia answer. I don't remember which one, like, like the order. Yeah, I, don't, I, I feel like it may have been C, but it was Glacier View. And so that's where they throw the cars off the cliffs. I would really like to go and see I that. I too. I've watched many videos. Yeah. Do they just like. No. They I got so many it. questions about that. <laughs> they pay someone really well. Freedom. <laughs> like how to get the car to go. And, and I'm assuming a. Is so they just push videos like, that people push. They it just them. push it over the edge and yeah. it's. Oh, it so it's, it's oh, not they, like it just like, goes like, go flying. Yeah, well, they maybe, fly. So I feel like break on the pedal. Yeah, yeah, or just you get it and roll out like any other, just any other, any other movie. movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay. So today's trivia is: What was the total number of people who signed the Declaration of Independence? A fifty four, B fifty six, C fifty five, or D fifty three? Does that does that order bother you? A little bit. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Does. Good. 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 That was the that was the goal. Uh, is that what comes next? Sure. Okay. Sure. This is your podcast. Yeah. Okay. You're free to do whatever you want. Mm-hmm. Within the bounds. That's right. <laughs> Within the bounds. <laughs> so the question of the week, these are from camp, the ones that you guys wrote to us um, at Devotion Class. Uh-huh. Um, so this week's is, how can I learn to read the Bible correctly and make sense of the lessons the books are trying to teach me? Hmm. Anybody have a <laughs> uh, <laughs> None of us. I'm sure we have something to say. I mean, when you're a lot of times what you have to look at in the Bible is you have to be doing context. So it's not going to say one thing one one place and another thing another place. And so you have to make sure that when you're reading, you have you're getting the whole picture because a lot of times people pull out verses or even just like sections of verses and they'll try to you can make the Bible say anything if you're just pulling little pieces out. Mm -hmm. But you have to make sure that you're getting it in its entirety. I also think of the uh, was it Monday's skit. We did the I know. What are you trying to pull? Um, you have to have the Holy Spirit. Like you can't yeah. just oh, read the yeah. Bible yeah. yourself in your own fleshly mind. Mm-hmm. You have to have God helping you understand it and read it and comprehend it. There's a lot of scholars that read the Bible and have no idea what it's about. Yeah. Yep. The only thing I would add, like, so yeah. I answered this at camp. So those were my two answers. Yeah. The only thing I would add to that is the counterpart, which is like the goal of reading the Bible correctly is mm-hmm. not actually reading the Bible, but yeah. living the Bible. Yeah. So if you mm-hmm. like, if you seek the Holy Spirit. I cannot understand this. It's going to take you dwelling in me to give me explanation yep. and understand. And then you read it in the way it was written in a mm-hmm. context, true to context. But then after you read it, after you seek the Holy Spirit, after you read it in context, you then ask the Holy Spirit to, again, show me how I'm supposed to implement that in my life. Show me mm-hmm. how I'm to live that out. Show me how to make that more than just words on a page. Yep. Um, that really is how you correctly read the Bible and live yep. the Bible. Yep. I'm going to lean into the whole Holy Spirit aspect of it because, I mean, who wrote the Bible? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? We have access to the author. Yeah. So if you want to know, yeah. ask the author. Yeah, but I think it's important to remember that as you're reading it. You're not reading a book like any other book. You're living yeah. a live, active book mm-hmm. uh, in order to know the author. Like, that's the goal of Bible reading. And so uh, knowing that going in um, kind of keeps check and balance on what we're yeah. doing. And, like, every time you read it, it you can find something totally then you missed the first time <laughs> yeah I so it's sure. not something that you're like a normal book i feel like people read books yeah. and then they're done like I, they read mm-hmm. that they know the story it's all know the ending like, yeah. yeah but like this is a like you just said a living book so like yep. you reread it reread it it doesn't matter how many times you've read that same chapter i've i've i'm like what where'd that come from that was not there <laughs> <laughs> yeah i would add to this um and i think i bring this up every time we do the nuggets of knowledge series which we didn't do this year <gasps> right wow. do i don't know i thought we did it at the beginning of the year maybe we did march but i don't think yeah, we did it's it usually year. march um but i always bring this up and I, I i say this to a lot of people and usually they just kind of scratch out. so that all is how you read the bible that's the answer mm-hmm. the, shut that book uh but what i would challenge to anyone who is reading the bible is in order to continue reading the bible correctly i always challenge people to mix it up Mm, That's what I do in my Mm -hmm. own personal life. Um, So sometimes I know Jamie sometimes listens to the Mm -hmm. Bible. Mm -hmm. Um, So like try audio Bible. There's some great audio Bibles out there. Um, I personally. So right now I'm actually using a um, Bible journal like it's the Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. H.E.A.R. And 
method, <laughs> here method. Uh, I was gonna say you just built. Here. I know, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm using that right. Now. I'm going through that. But to, like before, I was doing that. I was um, reading a chapter at a time, reading commentary, going back and reading the chapter. Yep. Um, so I always like once you find yourself like I have not really grasped anything in a week, or I'm not really mm-hmm. getting anything else. I'm not being challenged. Change it up. Yep. Like don't press on and continue doing the same thing change up how you're doing it in order for it to be fresh and to keep your heart in tune with what he's trying to show you. Because then ultimately, if you just sat there and read some words, it didn't do anything for you. And I think that's where a lot of, like, it's one thing to finally get people to read the Bible, but Mm -hmm. then most of the time that's where we default. And that's not how that, that's of no benefit. Yep. Okay. Great question. Yeah. 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 Really good question. I give you no credit. You didn't write that. I didn't write that. (laughs) I guess I did a good job. (laughs) Good job. She No. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, so happy birthday this week to Chloe Boggs, Hinata Bennett, Michael Spencer, Jacob Moore, Dodie Kaiser. I know. Dodie. <laughs> does. Anderson Steinmetz and <clears throat> Renee Sorrell. Happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> birthday. Uh, no meal. Mil- oh, okay. No meal. Oh. Chad. Chuck. Shock or Chuck? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes. 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 Okay. Both. <laughs> both of those things. So be sure to like comment subscribe and share and um we'll see you next week yeah Yeah. (laughs) that was good bye bye guys I'll answer that one. That shouldn't be in there. Is there something it, on the back? It's off. There's one at the back. Oh, okay. Because no, I go, best, get a no. microwave in the Did I grab the wrong stack? These aren't, these aren't great ones. No, Bess is sorted them. Bess is sorted. Bess is sorted. It kind of looks like my handwriting. You sound like your mama was a, I was a penguin. <laughs> caterpillar. It's not a penguin. <laughs> not a penguin. The caterpillar. Mem- Father was a worm, worm, but I'm okay with that now. Yeah. Caterpillar crawl. Caterpillar crawl. <laughs>